greatest story ever told. Today, we present Unto the Least of These, a drama based on a parable set forth in the 25th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, a parable from the greatest life ever lived. Although the Master teaches to the people of Galilee, his fame has already spread through all of Samaria and far southward into the province of Judea even as far south as the town of Beersheba, which is where Judea borders on the great desert. And in the town of Beersheba, there is one man to whom the master's teaching of a new way of life has come almost as the answer to a prayer. This man is the elderly Zechariah. And since the very first moment he heard about the master and of his birth and his teaching, Zechariah has pondered this very carefully until now when he chooses to speak to his son, Daniel. And so, Daniel, I have been thinking about this, and I have come to a conclusion. My son, it is time that I should be leaving here. Leaving? But why, Father? Surely you have been comfortable here. It has always been one of my ambitions in life to provide for you when you have reached this age. And so you have done, my son, and I'm sure God will remember you for it. Father, if anyone has said anything to make you feel you are not welcome here... My leaving is not to be interpreted as a complaint. You see, almost a year ago, I heard about the teachings of one whom his followers call the Master. And not only are his teachings so wonderful, but he works miracles too. In fact, Daniel, I'm led to believe that he is the Messiah. Father, do you realize what you have just said? Yes, my son, I realize it. And I tell it to you only so that you will know that for me, there can be no other way. I must go to Galilee. I must see him. But a man as old as you are, Father... Use that only as a test of how much I believe. For despite my age, I must go and see him. But Galilee, a, a new place, strange people... We have no family there. My son, let us face the realities. How much time do I have left? A year, two years? Let me go to Galilee and find him and spend that time with him. When you are older, you will realize what it means to want inner peace before it is too late. You have been thinking about this for a long time. Well, Father, if you feel that way, I wouldn't be the son you raised if I stood between you and such an ambition. I shall help you prepare for the journey. And don't forget, Father, you're to travel slowly. With such a fine camel as I've got for you, you can make the journey in leisure. Yet without sacrificing too much time. Daniel, you sound like a father instructing his son on his first journey away from home. Let me remind you, it's the other way around. And I have done my share of traveling, don't forget. But to go all the way to Galilee. You needn't worry, Daniel. And now I'd better say my farewells to Deborah, to the grandchildren. Oh, another one of the neighbors come to say goodbye, no doubt. Oh, who is it? Sir? Yes, my boy. And who are you? Sir? You're the last one he mentioned... Just before, well, he said for me to come here and tell you, and... Now, now, son. No need to cry. That's right. There's nothing so wrong that we can't help you. Now, tell me, what is it? Come now, just as if you were talking to your own grandfather. Well? My father, Jacob. Of course, you're Jacob's son. We should have recognized him, Daniel. Now, what about your father? He died, sir. Oh. You. Poor lad. I'm sorry. Very sorry. He said to come here, to tell you, Daniel, that you'd know what to do about us. Of course. Well, now, Jonathan, you go into the kitchen. Deborah will fetch you some good hot food. 
It's a long way here from your farm. You must be hungry. And we'll... Well, we'll talk about you and your brothers and sisters. Sir, father said my uncle would come to take us as soon as he gets word. Don't worry about a thing, son. Just go into the kitchen. Yes, sir. Comparatively young man like Jacob. Ah, that's, that's too bad. And now we've the children to think about. It wouldn't be so bad if they had a mother. No. And then there's the land. It's all that's left to the children. Should be protected for them. Yes. Um, Daniel? Yes, Father? You couldn't take the children into your home, could you? Not all six of them. But we could take one, and the others could be placed with families here in the town till their uncle comes for them. But is it the right thing to do, Daniel? They must be cared for. Of course, but they've just lost their father. Now they'll be losing each other at a time when they most need to be close. There should be another... Daniel, the children will not be separated. But who could take them in? After all, six children. Maybe no one has to take them in. They can't be left alone. I know, but I could live with them for the few weeks it would take. I could be their father. But you're ready to start on your way to Galilee. You wish to find the master. A few weeks won't matter too much. Besides, the children need someone. Yes, I, I shall take care of them till I can turn them over to their uncle. After that, I'll set out for Galilee. <laughs> Well, Jonathan, we've got them all off to bed again. Yes, sir. Father used to have much more trouble. We've gotten along pretty well the past few weeks, haven't we? Oh, yes, sir. And they're not afraid anymore. You mean they were afraid of me at first? Oh, no. But we were always expecting they would separate us. Now we know that won't happen. And by tomorrow, your uncle will come here, and you'll all go to live with him. And then you can go on to Galilee. You really want to go there very much, don't you, sir? Yes, Jonathan. Very much. And I better start my packing now. And yet you stayed on here to take care of us. I... I wish my father knew about that. Maybe he does. I remember times when he used to feel that this world wasn't such a very good place. Especially after Mother died. But if he knew what you did for us, I'm sure he'd have changed his mind. Well, thank you, Jonathan. And now, would you help me gather up my things? Of course, sir. We'll... We'll miss you. Once you're settled with your uncle, you'll forget all about me. Oh, no, sir. Oh, that, that might be word from your uncle now. Answer it. What? Daniel. Well, you needn't have come so far from town to see me tonight. You know I would have stopped there in the morning to say my farewell. Father, I... I don't know how to tell you. Tell me? Tell me what? Word has come from the children's uncle. He's going to be delayed a few days? Uh, not a few days. A, a week? Well, I could wait a week. Oh, not one week. Or even weeks. It will be months. M months? Months. Well, now... His message came with a caravan that entered the town this evening. I hurried here to tell you. Did he give any reason? He said he'd be risking ruin if he left his business now. After all, you, you cannot quarrel with a message. He just will not be here. I see. Sir, if you stay on here, will it mean that you won't ever get to see the master? Why, it doesn't have to mean that. A few months? Why, I'll be as strong and healthy then as I am now. I, I can wait a few months. No, sir. Now, what do you mean by that? Sir, you will forgive me for saying this, but, but I've been watching you. It's only been a few weeks, but... But you've changed. Huh? I noticed that when you first came here, you could lift little Nathaniel to your lap easily. Now I can see you have to strain when you do it. Oh, you mean, is it tonight? Well, I'm just a little tired tonight, that's all. Besides, Nathaniel's grown some in these past weeks. Please, sir, we'll get along. I mean, suppose we do have to live apart. Well, it's only months. If you want to see the master so much... The way you've told me when we sit up by the fire after the others have been put to bed. If you want it so much, sir, we couldn't stand in your way. So you, you want me to go, Jonathan? Of course not. But it isn't fair for us to keep you back, sir. 
We're nobody to you. And, and what you said before about the children not being afraid of losing each other anymore. What about that, lad? I... I didn't mean anything. Oh, we've, we've gotten along pretty well here, haven't we? Yes, sir. We've kept them fed. Yes, sir, and clean. Mother always used to say her children were to be clean. We've done that. And contented. Oh, yes. It's been like playing a game. A wonderful game where everybody has fun. You've done so much for us. We don't deserve any more. All right, then. My mind's made up. You're going. No. I shall stay here till you don't need me any longer. But the master. What about him? I have time. Still time left. And now, Jonathan, you're up long after your bedtime. Don't take advantage of my soft nature. Be off now. Yes, sir. Well? Sir? Could I... Would you mind if tonight I kissed you? Why... Well, go on. Get it over with. Yes, sir. That boy. Too sentimental. That's his trouble. Father, tell me, honestly, how much time do you think you have left? No man can answer those questions for himself. I, I only hope I have enough time. This time, Father, don't let anything deter you. After all, seven precious months have gone by. As long as the children are settled with their uncle, nothing will stop me now. After all, once I leave Beersheba, I'll be a traveler, alone, and making his way without any hindrance. And you will send word to us. Every so often along the route, I, I shall find someone traveling in this direction. You'll hear from me. Yes, but we'll never see you again. You mustn't feel that way, Daniel. Not many men are privileged as I am. To see my son grow to manhood. To see him with a family of his own. And then to be able to go on and realize such a dream as I have. Don't worry about me, son. May God be with you. And if you are with him, you can do no wrong. May he bless you and Deborah and the children. Forever. You there, Sentry. What town is this? Why, right, this is Bethlehem, sir. A fine town, as you know, and always ready to welcome travelers. You know, Sentry, I've been looking forward to this town. He was born here. A kinsman of yours? Why, no. The master. Oh, him. Yes, he was born here, they say. And now, sir, if it's a fine inn you're looking for, good food, I can recommend the one right down this street. Uh, you can see it from here. Uh, arms for the poor? Are uh, you there, woman? No begging allowed here. Get on with you. Please, sir. This kind traveler might be of a mind to give me a coin. Get along with you. You beggars give the town a bad reputation. Get along. Yes, sir. All right. I'll get along. Poor woman. Don't feel so sorry for her. She's been told more than once to stay away from the town gate. The elders don't like it. They say it gives Bethlehem a reputation for its beggars instead of for its fine people. And just what do these fine people of yours do for the beggars? What do you expect us to do? If you give them money or food, you, you only encourage them. We keep them moving, that's what. We don't want them around here. Bethlehem, the place where he was born. And you've so little kindness here. Oh, uh, look, sir, about that inn. It's right down... Gentry, never mind about the inn. That poor woman, look, she's just fainted. <laughs> Please try to help me with her. 
We must get her to her bed. Yes, sir. What's happened There's to her? There's no time for questions now, my dear. We must get your mother to her bed. Yes, sir. It's here in the corner. Now. Now. Help me. Yes, sir. Uh, there. Now, child, the first thing you do is to make some hot broth for her. She's weak. Broth, sir? Don't just stand there. I said start making broth. But, but there's nothing to make broth from. You mean there's no food at all? Well, then, here, take this coin. Go into the marketplace, get some food, and hurry. Sir, that's a silver coin. Of course. Now, quickly, take it. But we could never pay you back. Here, child, for your mother's sake, take this and hurry. Yes, sir. <laughs> My dear, I shall have to be leaving here tomorrow. Zechariah, you say it as though you apologize. I'd like to stay on and care for you and the child, but I must go. You see, there's so little time left. You put off your dream for almost a month just to stay here and help us. To see we were fed and cared for. A month? Has it been that long? Oh, you needn't try to make little of the time. I know how you must be measuring it now at your age. Well, it can't be more than a few weeks' journey from here by camel. I'll find him. There'll yet be time to learn his way to achieve the peace I seek. I hope so. Because no man deserves peace and contentment more than you. You've been so kind. So kind... I wish there was some way I could repay you. To see the change in you, to see the color come into Sarah's little face, that's been a great deal in repayment to me. Now, I want you to take this little pouch. More money. Take it and use it to feed the child and yourself till you're strong enough to find work. But what of your needs? Where I'm going, I'll need little. It'll be a comfort to know the money's doing some good here. Take it. You really want us to have it, Zachariah. I have enough to take me where I'm going. All I must do now is hurry. Out of the way, man. Out of the way. What's the matter with you? I... Whoa, whoa. You there. Don't you know enough to get out of the road when a camel approaches? Sir, you talk to me. Yes, I'm talking to you. Here, here I am. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Yes, sir. Line. Then you shouldn't be going about alone. You could have been hurt very badly. Here, young man, let me help you. Stand where you are. I'll, I'll dismount. There. Now, tell me. Where do you want to go? They said this was the town of Nazareth, where he lived. Yes, I've come here myself, seeking him. And so did I, for he shall give sight to these useless eyes of mine. I've heard he can do that. They told me not to start. They said a blind man could not travel such a long distance alone. But I have. I have come this far, and I will go farther until I find him. Where have you come from, young man? From Bethel. Bethel? Why, that's back in Judea. You've walked all that way yes, by yourself. I have. It has taken a long time. Almost a year counting the mistakes, the wrong roads. But I will see him, and he shall cure me. Of course. Such faith as yours mustn't go unrewarded. I've heard he's by the shore of the Sea of Galilee now, near Magdala, Capernaum. Yes, that is what I heard, too. Another two months or three, and I shall find him. Two months? To go that distance? For the blind, it takes longer, sir. Two months? Do not worry. I will find him. How do you eat, my son? I beg. And you walk on naked feet? They do not bleed often. Would you like to find the master sooner than two months? Sooner even than two weeks? You must not joke with me, sir. Perhaps it can be arranged. How? 
with a camel, you could travel faster, couldn't you? And would the camel know where to go? Oh, oh, you're right. This will take more than I thought at first. You must have an animal, and you must travel in a caravan. You must have fodder for the animal and food for yourself. The only miracle I seek is to see again. It's no miracle. I know how it can be done. And we will arrange it. Come with me. There, Abraham. Not as fine as a camel, but this donkey will take you to the mast. To see him in only two weeks. And don't forget... You're to keep the money belt tight around you. There's enough in it to keep you till you reach him. A driver in the caravan will guide you. Yes, sir. Why should you do this for me? You need not concern yourself about that. But what of you? I will get along somehow. I know how you feel about him. I know why you're going to see him. I can tell. It is in your voice and the words you speak. It means a great deal to see him soon, doesn't it? Yes. Then why should you give up your place for me? How will you reach him with no animal to take you? I can walk. An old man like yourself. I'm really not so old. You have the voice of an old man. You know, even the blind can be wrong sometimes. I'll walk it. I've walked longer distances in my time. No, don't you worry about me. I'll, I'll be there. Yes, I, I'll be there. And in time... Please, some, someone help me. I'm, I must find him before it's too late. Here, friend. I'll help you. Thank you. I must be close now. Very close. They, they said so. You come seeking the master? Yes. It's been a long time. Is he here? He is. Then I must go to him now. There's not much time left. He is atop that hill. Let me help No, you. no. I'll... I'll, I'll reach there. Here, sir. Let me help you. I'll carry you. <laughs> now... You rest easy. Who are you? Peter is my name. Peter? Yes, I've, I've heard of you. The, the strong one. And look, so many people hereabouts. So many. It's just like I imagined. Exactly. You've come a long way? From Beersheba. That is a long way. And a long time... Tell me, Peter, did a young man come here, a, a tall man, Abraham was his name, and he was blind. He came to regain his sight. He was here. Tell me, did he go away seeing? Yes. Ah, oh, that's good. It was better that way, much, much better. The boy has his sight again. It was worth it. It was. What do you know of it? He talked of nothing else but the man named Zachariah. Me? He wanted to see you with his own eyes. He waited many days. Then he gave up. You see, he thought you might never arrive here at all. It was nice of him to have waited as long as he did. And now, sir, the moment you've come all this way for, here's Zachariah, here's the master. But Peter, set me down. If I cannot stand before him, at least let me lie at his feet. Yes, Zachariah. There. And you needn't talk loud for him to hear. Yes, yes. Master... I'm here. Not when I wanted. Nor as I wanted. But I'm here. 
seems like such a long time ago that I decided to come. But things intervene. You, you must forgive me. It was my fault. Perhaps I should have been more steadfast. You see, I plan to spend my last year or two here. Seeking your way. And the peace and contentment it promised. Now I have no years left. No time to learn. No time. So different, Master. Come, you, blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Master, you speak thus to me. But I have only seen you this moment. Heard your voice only once. I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. Master, please, surely you must mistake me for another man. I'm Zachariah of Beersheba. You've never seen me before. When did I feed you? When did I come to aid you in your sickness? Surely you, you mistake me for another. Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Peter? Peter, did you hear? Bless it, and of his kingdom. All that I sought, the peace, the contentment, is mine now. Yes, Zachariah, for you have known him. Your deeds show that. Thank God, and his goodness. I am not too late. Not too late.